Well, let's bring political analyst Bongani Mashlangu to weigh in on the final voter registration weekend happening. Bongani, good afternoon and thanks for your time on the ACBC at the Sawa. Oh, greetings to you um, and your colleagues there at the SABC and listeners at home. Thanks, Bongani. Obviously, it's the final voter registration weekend, and, and we're looking at the gaps that continue to pervade amongst the different age groups and um, sectors in society. From your vantage point, what will it take to convince those that have not registered and are not willing to vote to show up this weekend? Well, I, I think um, the first thing we must just acknowledge is that we'll never reach 100% as far as voter turnout is concerned. Yes. And that is amongst um, all demographic groups. Um, and also the demographic groups in South Africa have um, sometimes varying interests. Um, but um, I think what we have seen recently is organizations, what is called boutique organizations or niche organizations that appeal specifically to one single demographic and are not um, trying to appeal to everyone. So I think with those organizations coming to contest these uh, elections of 2024, it might also assist with regards to the mobilization, with regards to the reach, with regards to ensuring that there is incentive for other people to actually go and participate. Um, then there's this thing that I've said before, that there are also demographics that we must look into, that their level of consciousness will obviously demobilize them from participating in any electoral exercise, or even if it's outside of elections, just by participating in any decision-making process, whether it's in their community, province, or in their country. They are just um, unconscious, they are just ignorant, and they do not see and will never be convinced otherwise. And unfortunately, in most cases, they're not. That is then your youth demography. And those are the people that are marginalized the most. Those are the people that find it very difficult to access the labor market or any other economic opportunities that would activate them um, economically and have limited ways. But they just don't see. And we see them that they're able to mobilize to party, mobilize to group, mobilize to consume alcohol and smoke happily, but they cannot be mobilized into decision-making processes of their very own country that will affect them currently and also in the long run. Mm. So those are the kind of things that we must also take into cognizance. And then when it comes to the non-voters, that will, um, those are the people that contribute to ensuring that we don't reach 100% is that we must also take into cognizance that some people don't vote out of religious reasons. I know one church group in South Africa, and it has quite a significant following. I won't mention its name. The people, the members of the church group, instead want to participate in so-called weekly exercises. And unfortunately, then they contribute or they um, impair the turnout. And then there are just people that lack motivation. There are people that cannot be mobilized. And again, there are people that don't have the necessary capacity. And also, um, there, just to make the final point, a higher vote turnout could mean that it's just an additional supporters of an already overrepresented party. And um, then you find that potential voters of underrepresented parties still remain at home. So just sometimes looking at it quantitatively is also problematic in itself. Well, Bungani, thank you for those sentiments. We'll leave that conversation there for now.